I'm joking. I know I'm lying. Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Don't want to drive my advocacy nuts. I'm here to talk to you about none other than the money. Jerry Maguire style. Show me the money. This is the day we've been waiting for. As I told you, there's gold in the crisis. You can't show me a crisis where there's no gold. Every crisis has its gold. And so today I'm going to talk to you about the coronavirus, right? But not just any type of approach. But we're going to talk about the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act. Okay? CARES. That's why I put who cares, but you know how I am. I always got to give you a nice catchy title. I want to know who cares to get their $10,000 or more. Should they go through with this? And it seems like it's a huge expedience for them to go through with this. And we're going to talk about it. Should they go through with this? You guys need not be intimidated by the, by the paperwork. You need not be intimidated by the paperwork. Because I'm going to tell you, we miss out on a lot of opportunities because we haven't acclimated ourselves to paperwork and processing. Once we start seeing information about, uh, or questions about our status, our income status and everything, we get a bit weary. But I want you to understand that a lot of the things you're looking to avoid is not even requisite to what you have to do. Meaning it's not part of the criteria. No one's gonna ask you for your taxes. Yep. You're a small business, and no one's gonna actually even have employees. Check. Facts. Even the camera woman is like, Daru, these are facts. And we're going to read it. We're going to get some reference points to make sure we're not bugging. And if this be the case, if they say we're giving $10,000 out, minimum, to small businesses, this ain't coming from me. You guys can go to the SBA.gov, Small Business Administration. Gov. You can go there and you can check it out. The applications and everything is there. I just taught a course today and I included this data so people can acclimate themselves. I wanted my people to acclimate themselves from the course that we did today. Beautiful course. If any of you guys was in the course, let me know how you feel. This was just class one today. But I wanted to make sure we talk about this because it's gold in the crisis. So I couldn't miss an opportunity for us to include this in the conversation. But I did say on Facebook, I will go into more elaborate detail about it because provided this goes through and it looks like it's a huge experience for it to go through. See, traditionally when you're dealing with grants, it's a whole lot of paperwork and you gotta get grant writers and you gotta go through all sorts of stipulations. And you start just, like, you know, damn, is it worth the money? They don't just want my birth certificate and my social security. They wanna know what my draw size is and who I cheated on last year. They want every damn thing just for you to get a grant. Well, this is kind of like a grant, but it's also a loan. And I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but they're willing to forgive the loan. So this thing is basically, this is basically taking on the attributes of a grant, taking on the attributes of loans, taking on so many different attributes. Basically, what we're talking about is something unorthodox. It's never really been seen before. Okay, in the era that we're in now, they can't just print the money and get us out of the situation. They actually have to share the money. And remember, America's treasurer just holds the receipts for the country. I wouldn't even say the treasury is really part of America. They keep the receipts. Okay? If you kept up with Ben Bernanke when he was doing his thing, you would realize, yo, son is the treasurer for somebody else. Maybe the Federal Reserve. And then you're probably thinking the Federal Reserve is part of America. Then we gotta also pull up that book that's free online from the Federal Reserve called Modern Money Mechanics. So you put $100 in the bank, $90 can be created from it. You put $1,000 in the bank, $900 can be created from it. This is Modern Money Mechanics. They can create as much 10% difference from what you put in the bank. These things are all important. And then you have to study the House Joint Resolution 192 March 9th, 1933. These are all references for things that we have to discuss today because they no longer pass laws, they pass bills. And to be more precise, they no longer pass laws, they pass bills of exchange, which means everything is dealing in commerce. Everything is about commerce at this particular point. That's why you have privatized prisons that have a quota 
that they must meet to fill up at least nine every nine out of every ten cells, otherwise it's gonna close down. Okay? Bills of exchange. And that's why when a person gets incarcerated, they have the bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond that gets consolidated into an MBS or a mortgage-backed security, and the Corrections Corporation of America acts as the surety. Let me not go on a tangent about all this information. Let me get back to the money, which I never really left. And for those of you that do the research, you're going to really realize why all that information was important and why was it prerequisite for me to talk about what we're talking about today. The economy is on a steady decline, okay? This shit is more than a bear market at this point. It's a damn slug. It's crawling. And so we're looking for the groundhog, so to speak, or the dead cat bounce. We're looking for those occasions where the economy gets spiked up. Well, what they're looking to do is employ a cheat code to get the economy, the economy stimulated. They're saying, hey, we could just make up some damn excuses to put money in these people's pockets Perhaps they will spin. So we, we have to coin it as something responsible, though. So responsibly, we'll say, hey, there's a stimulus package, and here's your $1,200 each. But here's another part of the stimulus package, and what we're willing to do is give you $10,000 or even more as a small business. So long, as, And we'll forgive the loan so long as you show forth and prove that you used it to facilitate your business or your business goals. You paid your employees, you paid for your storefront, whatever it is, technology. But idealistically, the game plan is if we give it to business owners and they use it towards their business, whatever their business may entail, whether it entails, oh, we need cameras, okay? We need pots and pans. Oh, we have to pay our employees, and then your employees get it, and then they shop and buy more than just toilet paper. The economy can't run off of toilet paper alone. They need people to spend money on other things other than hand sanitizer as well. We can't continue like this for another probably two weeks. Otherwise, this thing's going to go to hell. So money has to be given in expedient fashion. People need money. They need it now. Now, what I'm saying to you guys is outside of claiming Day Day and Ray Ray as your children, knowing damn well they ain't your child. This might be the biggest and easiest come up you've ever had in your life with less obligation. As they talk about extending the forbearance of you not having to pay your mortgage or your rent, not for six months, but now they're talking about 12. And as far as this $10,000 loan that can be forgiven for small businesses, they're talking about making it a recurring thing. But first, of course, we have to get the first set. But it's going to be first come, first serve now. Keep this in mind. So you guys got to get on top of this. Get on top of this in real time. All right? So I just wanted to show you some of these things. All right? So let's look at this. And those of you, if you sign up to the website, you get access to this data and associated data. But remember, a lot of this information in particular, you can go to sba.gov. The only thing that we do is a critical analysis of what it means and represents and also familiarize people with it because a lot of you right now, Press 9 if you had no idea about this SBA, this SBA loan. If you had no idea about the Small Business Administration talking about, hey, giving people $10,000 or businesses $10,000, if you haven't seen the application before, press 9. You walk with me. If you, if you haven't seen the criteria to which end you be approved for the loan, press 9. And I want you guys to look at the 9s that's inside of that chat. And this is why I say it's important what you do with your time and who you listen to during that time. Because while you're listening to gossip or while you're looking at some debaucherous activity, you may be missing out on your opportunity to get your $10,000. This needs to be in your conversation. And we're going to leverage this money that we get and, and do some creative things with it. That would be the goal. Or be lost in the mire of not paying attention yet again and another generation talking about we missed our opportunities. Okay? You see them nines in the chat? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And just imagine how many Negroes is on YouTube right now talking negative about somebody. And ain't nobody turning around and say, hey, Negro, take a break off of that. Let's all get $10,000. Shit, we might even want to allocate some of that money and pool it in the fund. 
and call it our business for, our, for the sake of our survival. You might want to set up an endowment fund trust because with an endowment fund trust, you can invest in yourself by investing in something else and saying we allocate the revenue streams from the same and put it into the fund. See? So you can spend your money on an endowment fund trust and then have the right to invest in, let's say, the stock market or some real estate and then say the revenue streams that we get from that is going to make up a percentage of the fund. But you see, being a small business can entail any of a number of things and they left the translation so loose on purpose. This is not speculation. They just need to jumpstart the economy. And I'm going to tell you, these bills never get passed. Watch me. These bills don't be getting passed on Mondays and Tuesdays. These things is always down the pike on the weekend because they want to see a strong opening. I'm telling you, the rumors, the speculations always take place at the latter stages of the week in preparation for the opening of the next week. Last week was hell. And they like, yo, we need to at least start the damn speculations. I've seen this several times over since this coronavirus. Every weekend, there's some new speculation about the monies that the cruise lines is going to get. Monday, they open up. It looks strong. Tuesday, oh, the cruise lines, they don't, know, they, don't, um, they, they don't get approved. I'm sorry, guys. But everybody's like, yo, it sounds like things are looking good. Let's put money back in the economy. Then we find out, oh, it was just a rumor. So what I'm saying is you got to understand the game. But these things, I think, is a lot more tangible. A lot more tangible. So they got the Borrower Paycheck Protection Program application. So here's the application right here. You got to get in tune with this data. Let's go. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this because if you want to get into the build and the conversation, just register at I am Brother Polite dot app website. It's the website to the app. Don't attempt to download the app. They're locked and loaded. We just loading them up a little more. So we didn't publish them yet. And then we're also waiting for the for, our, for Apple to give us our response because we updated our registration for Apple because we want to launch the Android and the Apple simultaneously. We don't want half of our contingency to have access to the app and the other half not. So we're waiting on Apple. And then once Apple gives us the go, we probably got like three, four more days, we'll probably launch the app the following week because then we gotta play with the Apple to see how things look on Apple versus how it looks on Android. You know, tech is weird. You can create something and then it looks one way on the phone and you love how it looks. You check it out on a Windows computer, it looks horrible. You check it out on Apple, it looks better. Then the colors, there's a darker hue on one and a lighter hue on the other. Then eventually sometimes you gotta find the, the right medium of which you accept for all platforms. So it's tricky, but anyway, if you want more data on all these things, you're going to go register at IamBrotherPolite.app and we'll have a special video for you, actually. My brother John from the Black Card Bandits, he's going to have a beautiful video sitting there waiting for you. And he's going to go over all these things. John is the one that helps me with my mortgages, getting through the door. You know, Brother Polite, I told you, you got to have a starting five. I had to add him to the team. This guy is like a start five by himself. He's one of those people. But uh, my brother John Nunez, uh, as I always tell you guys, once you start making your money, you set up a starting five, understanding that you're talented. But for me, it's not point guard, shooting guard, small forward, center, power forward. This is the modern NBA. I did it. But for me, I like to say you need to make sure you get a publicist. You got to have somebody in your PR. So you get yourself a publicist. You get yourself a CPA. You probably get two CPAs, one to watch the other one. I normally uh, replace one on average and keep one for the long term. But anyway, get you a CPA, get you a publicist, get you an entertainment attorney, okay? And then get you a manager, get you an agent. Start five. One of them is a six man because we got to include you. You're the talent. You're up there in the front, okay? So you got your manager, you got your agent, you got your CPA, you got your entertainment attorney, you got your publicist, and then of course we have you, most obviously. And then you need that other guy, so unique on the team, he can play several roles and fulfills the miscellaneous tasks that no one considers that gets the team over the hump. That's who John is for me, all right? He's, he's one of those people. 
and the man is a twin, and his damn twin is my broker. So you see, he doubled up just being him by himself. It's just tricky the way my situation works. But John is gonna have a special video for you guys to just walk you through the process and let you know how he could possibly be of help to you. As I go to John and I say, yo, Jay, I need, I need the hookup for this over here. Because when you're talented, you don't do everything yourself. You build a team, a specialist around you, credentialed, certified, or just proficient, whatever the case may be, whatever it may require, and you have them at your disposal to move you forward, to keep that forward momentum. So I don't stop teaching, stop writing books, stop coaching, stop mentoring, stop everything, because I want to do what the publicist does, I'm going to deal with my PR, I'm going to do my own accounting, I'm going to do my own mortgages, I'm going to do, you know, that's insane. So what I've created was an opportunity for people that join our movement, that they can have at their disposal, the people that I have at my disposal, considering that you're gonna come up and you may not be able to afford the ticket or pay the bill, foot the bill on a month-to-month -month basis for the starting five. So I have my people from time to time at your disposal, at your disposal, so you can uh, disposal so you can use them at your leisure or when it suffice. Okay, so that's the CARES Act that we have this document on. We're gonna put it on the site anyway just so you can just look at it. We just want to encourage the behavior to stay in the know when it comes to current events. But stay in, stay in tune with us, man. Stay in tune with us. Gotta, gotta stay on this. So let's go to this, this one right here. This is important. Okay, this is the Small Business Paycheck Protection Program. So this is going to give you our outline of it. Keep in mind, you can look this stuff up today. Keep these titles in mind. Review the video, share the video, tell your brothers and sisters, tell your family, tell your aunt, tell your mom. Everybody's always worried about, we ain't got no money, we laid off. We do a lot of complaining, but we don't make the necessary effort or strides to connect with the people that keep us in the know. Because what you're complaining about, there's always some answer or some resources around. It doesn't matter how bad things are. And in fact, when things are at a critical low, there's always some kind of resource available that we just don't know about because we're just not talking to the right people. And in fact, we're still talking to the wrong people, and that's part of the equation. In order to start talking to the right people, you have to cease and desist from talking to the wrong people. Why are you talking to them? You can't hear nobody else speaking. And as they say, a tape recorder can't record and play at the same exact time. All right? You don't, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room if you're not aware of where the money's at. That's going to put you nowhere. If you're the smartest person in the room and you yourself don't know where to go to get the money, how are you going to rely on your, your company? It's not going to work. Let's go to the next one. So I'm just giving you a quick overview. I'm not going to read through all of this. Though I would love to. I really want to. Paycheck Protection Program. Because we got some stuff we're going to read over. So let's go to the next one. We're going to go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Lender information. Let's see. Okay, we'll, we'll leave this. They can go to the site register. They can read up on it. And what I'll do, I have certain things highlighted for you that I think are of critical importance. However, you can use your own discretion when you read these things. I just want to make sure the conversation starts in our community that you should be approved for the $10,000 the loan process is not long. Three days from the time they see it, the application, it's a ready process. Boom, get them that bread as soon as possible. We're gonna go over that conversation right now. That information, pardon me. Let's get to the PowerPoint. You could, you could close that out. That's just the internet right there. Now here's the first thing I want to go over with you one more time, just so you can understand the significance of the money that's coming through iPod Shuffle. I did this with you before. I want to do it for you again, and I can't do it enough. When it came out, October 23rd, 2001, it was $399. Original base, model iMac, $1,299. When this came out, it was $1,299, and this was in the month of August 1998. Okay? And right here, the first Mac, January 24th. 1984, it cost $2,495. Look at this ancient mechanism right here, costing $2,400. The reason why this is important for those of you that may have missed the demonstration where I used this slide in particular is coming up right now. 
What if the mentality was, hey, from now on, this is how Brother Polite is going to commission you. If new technology comes out, or a company comes out with a product that you just say is so enticing, it's hard to resist. You cannot afford to buy the product unless you could buy the product two or three times over. Why? Because the first set of money that that product represents in the retail price should be for your ownership. So, if you see $399 for an iPod in 2001, imagine if you would have spent the $399 on the stock. That's right, Apple stock. What if you put $399 into Apple stock? The price that they wanted for the technology. That $399 today would bring you to about $58,000. That's insane. But what if when you bought the $1,299 model iMac in 1998, what would your shares be worth today? $178,000. Spending $1,300 gives you 13,500% more of the, that of the money that you invested in ownership. And then what if we go to the first Mac, January 24th, 1984, knowing that it cost $2,495, how much would that have made us if we invested the $2,495 into the stock as opposed to paying the $2,495 for a computer that we would laugh at today? In 1984, if your parents would have bought this, my aunt bought this, okay, for the household. In 1984, if your parents would have bought this, and those parents that have, whose children are dirt broke today, whom the parents are also poor today and probably laid off. It is the equivalent of $960,000 in value today. This $2,495 that could have been paid for in ownership, owning a portion of the company that produced the product. That $2,495 makes you almost a million dollars today. And that is a 38,500% height. Most of the times we was in school, especially high school, while we played around with all those numbers, we never got the numbers for relevancy's sake. We never conceptualized how these numbers can work to our better advantage. There was a disconnect in math class. We never thought money. In fact, when we saw 100%, we normally thought 100% and lower. We never considered something could be 38,500%. Again, we never considered that the percent can not only go higher than 100%, but 38,500%, and that that percentage will even be relevant to us any day in our lives. When we learned about percent, we never considered 13,500% can be relevant in our lives. We never considered that 14,500% can be relevant in our lives. But in fact, if you bought Bitcoin inside of three, five years ago, you may have spent $35, $75. That last year, each share that you may have bought for $35 or $75 was worth $15,000. So if you bought 10 shares of Bitcoin at $35, you're $350. Last year, your $350 made you $150,000. And if we bought the 10 sets of those 10s, if we spent $3,500, it's fair to say you've made $1.5 million over $3,500. And of course, there was times where Bitcoin was only worth a percentage of a penny. And we don't even want to get into that. We should want to, though. Come think about it. Well, we're not going to do that right now. All right, so let's say, let's do the math. I'm gonna give you the numbers on that. I'm gonna give you the numbers on the Bitcoin. And what you need to understand, these opportunities exist all the time. These opportunities are always at our disposal. But you gotta stay in the know and you gotta keep the conversation amongst the people that stay in the know, or at least want to be in the know. Exchange ideas with people who wanna do better and are presently doing better, not just wanting to, pardon me. Let's go to the next one. 
So, our responsibility right now, our parents miss the wave, don't miss the tsunami. The reason why I say this, because we're talking about the stimulus package, right? We're talking about the gold and the crisis. This is what I want you guys to understand. I want you brothers and sisters to understand something right now. That today we're talking about the coronavirus, but in years to come, we'll be talking about this economy. We'll be talking about the investments. We'll be talking about the opportunities. We'll be talking about the people who struck gold. Today we're talking about the virus. Tomorrow we'll be talking about the economy. We'll be talking about the market. And our parents missed the wave. But this right here is a tsunami. We got the opportunity to not just catch the wave, but catch the tsunami. We should be overwhelmed with opportunities and possibilities. And if you're feeling like you're in your house and you don't know what to do next, just that thought in itself is egregious. It's insane. If you're sitting in your house and you're like, yo, I don't know what the next move is. You got money being thrown left and right. And opportunities, a plethora of opportunities right before you. You got to connect the dots, people. Don't sit here playing this game with the world's going to end and all of that. Because every time we come up out of that, I know the religious folks, they come out every time there's a bunch of disease or a bunch of murders, they come out and show you scripture. God be doing this. They do this every pandemic. They show you that God is responsible for the pandemic. It does nothing for their children that have to exist after them. Those verses don't make you no money. All it does is make you celebrate that people are dying and you give God the credit for it. I don't never see these people give me the verses that something good's going on. We come out of the pandemic and they get cures. I never see the verses where God is responsible for the cure. I always get the verses where God is responsible for the murders. I mean, goddamn, can we just once get somebody to read a verse where God ain't killing every fucking body? It's like this is that's why I call our people the Hebrew miserable lights. That's what we become. Hebrew miserable lights. Give us some bad news and you're gonna give the credit to God. Give us some good news. And they don't say nothing. They waiting for the next set of bad news so they can pull up the verse. Oh, you see the trade center? Yeah, the trade center. God did that. God killed all those innocent black people that went to work. And looked out for all the Jews that, for whatever reason, didn't show up to work. Then. God always murdering us, right? Let's go to the next one. See, now I'm going to have to turn up and give y'all one of those videos. Keep on. Here we go right here. Let me see if I can tighten up the image. Or I'll just read it to you from here. But yeah. This is the this is Schumer actually sent this. Okay? Mr. Schumer himself sent it now. <clears throat> We're about to go in on this. This is important. Okay, we just started here. You can just listen to me, and I'll, I'll read it off to you. I don't know how clear it is for you over there, but we write to thank you our recent phone call to discuss the implementation of the Small Business Administration, critical programs to help the nation's small business and nonprofits stay afloat during this unprecedented crisis. COVID-19 has wreaked havoc, wreaked havoc on employers and their workers across every industry and in every corner of the nation. So many of our small business operate at close margins and have limited ability to absorb the kind of significant hit to revenues that this pandemic has caused. As we convey and as we know, as we convey and as we know, you understand a swift implementation is required of the Small Business Assistance Congress included in the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, the CARES Act. And follow up to our conversation. Let's look down over here where it says implementation timeline. Listen to the word, listen to the sense of urgency. They wanna get this money out there as soon as possible. So many small businesses and nonprofits have weeks, if not days before they go under. Let's do that again. First line here, right there, first sentence. So many small businesses and nonprofits have weeks, if not days, before they go under. 
We need swift implementation of the various SBA, Small Business Administration, programs in the legislation. While we appreciate that the administration has committed to the first Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, loans being processed this Friday, we want to stress the need for clarity on how business can access these programs and lenders can facilitate the loans. Can you confirm when detailed guidance will be finalized and how this information will be shared with small businesses and organizations so they are aware? Okay, so you, you feel the sense of urgency. <clears throat> here we go. So I want you to also check this thing out right here. This is very important as well. I want you to check this out. So we hear the sense of urgency, get the monies to the people fast, find out the criteria, and let's get it going. All right, right here, just walk with me. If it's blurry, just walk with me, I got you. We want to have a close understanding of how many loans are being made, who is receiving the loans, and how quickly funding is being drawn down in case Congress must act quickly in considering more funding for these programs. Can you commit to a weekly report for this information? We're gonna go down to where I got highlighted in red. Affiliation rules. In addition to how affiliation rules may negatively impact nonprofits, we are also concerned that some genuine small businesses that have a relationship with these investors may be left out of PPP loans due to affiliation rules. We are also concerned that lenders and the SBA could be hindered by the lack of clarity in the rules as they stand because they are cumbersome complex and in some cases subjective. Will the SBA issue swift guidance that has brighter lines and additional clarity to resolve confusion with regard to the eligibility of small businesses with minority investors in order to better inform applicants and avoid leaving out small businesses with credible need? Okay. Ensuring small disadvantaged and underserved businesses receive assistance. That's all the way at the bottom right here. We are very concerned about the limited funding provided to the SBA PPP loans being drawn down quickly, especially given the provisions for the franchises, big hotels and restaurants. What protocols are you putting in place to monitor the use of funds? Given these funds are first come first serve, how are you ensuring that independent and community small businesses without the resources of larger companies are getting the assistance they need to assess the program? Okay, this is you guys probably. And so we see right here, debt relief for SBA borrowers, right over here. The CARES Act included a provision to provide debt relief for six months to existing and new SBA borrowers. We view this as a forceful but simple step to stabilize existing portfolio and enabling SBA lenders to focus on making new loans. It is our view that borrowers need not complete any paperwork to receive this benefit. Do you agree? What are your plans for notifying lenders and borrowers about this provision and for implementing it quickly? Emergency Economic Injury Grant, right here. The CARES Act included a requirement that a $10,000 grant be, be awarded within three days of the, an application to the SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program to help cover operating expenses while waiting for the loan processing. Are SBA staff prepared to fulfill this requirement? Okay. And it's signed by Chuck Schumer and everything. But this is what I want y'all guys to get. So I just want you to get in the know of what's going on. How they want to get this money to you as soon as possible. And these are the things that really, really count right here. Let me see if I can get this thing. That's entirely too dirty. Hold on real quick. John is actually in the chat, okay? So you can connect with him in the chat room if you got questions. John can definitely assist you.
You want me to just put it on there? You want to inbox this? What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it available for the website. Tomorrow you guys will see it on the website. At about 1 o'clock p.m., the very latest, there will be a Dropbox link. Once you click it, you'll get access to this data. Uh, everybody that's in the class, in the course, you'll just get the email because it's part of the data for your course. Because anything money, especially of this significance, you guys got to lock in. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. I'm going to just close this thing out. So right here, let's look at the first slide. <clears throat> what we want to know is about the qualifications. So this is coming out the act itself. These parts are highlighted right here, which you need to see. So let's go to B. Let's go to section 1110 emergency EIDL grants. We're going to go right down here. We see the green Corsa blinking at. And here we're going to go to B on the left side. It says any individual who operates under a sole proprietorship, I mean you're in by business by yourself, with or without employees. So you have a business, a sole proprietorship, with or without employees, or as an independent contractor. I want you to know, these are very loose translations for <clears throat> your fam. Do you want this small business money or not? We're going to go down, and I'm going to circle. Well, you'll see here, right here in the blue at the bottom on the left-hand side, we're going to read this. Oh, yeah, we got you with the info. Just make sure you register at the website, IamBrotherPolite.app. IamBrotherPolite.app. In fact, you could type it in there for them. And we'll be there. <clears throat> so here we see term, credit elsewhere. With respect to loan made under Section 7B2 of Small Business Act, 15 U.S.C., 636, B in parentheses 2, in response to COVID-19, during the covered period, the administrator shall waive. Look at that keyword underlined. The administrator shall waive. Now I want you to see where I got the arrow at. Any rules related the personal guarantee on advances and loans of not more than $200,000 during the covered period for all applicants. So they're not stressing too much how much money you make. So even if you're getting a little bag, even if you get in a little bag, you know, do your thing. Even if you get in a little bag, they're not knocking you. And the requirements that an applicant needs to be in business for the one year period. Everybody gets this money. <clears throat> Even if you're denied the PPP. Be mature, be responsible. Don't hear all those P's and start, <laughs> you know, because I almost did it. That's why I, if I did it, somebody else was doing it. So listen, even if you're denied for the triple P, you're entitled to this money. All right. The requirements that an applicant needs to be in businesses for the in business for a one year period before the disaster, except that no waiver may be made for a business that was not in operation on January 31st, 2020. The reason why we're going into this fine lining. It's because they're telling you, damn near anybody can get this money. <clears throat> you see that word wave that I highlighted? This is the fine print. So you guys that's used to being denied money all the time can say to yourself, you know what? <clears throat> this is the fine print. So you guys that's used to being denied money all the time can say, ah, I'm sure it's just yet another time. Because after all, the last five times I got denied for money was because of this, that, and third. They're waiving all of these denials. And this isn't really going to be publicized, this part of the information. I'm showing you guys this because it's on a first come, first serve basis. And if you're sitting over there down on your own luck, you're going to be, you're, man, you may never even know how many things since you've been alive that you applied, that you could apply for and, and won. Because this is how they do. They have us intimidated by the paperwork all the time. <clears throat> so we go to the next slide. We got two more left. And we're going to do this again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I type this up neatly. You got to understand, this information is coming through very spontaneously. And I had to work on a course today. Make sure the course started. Yes, the course started about almost two hours earlier. So we was on time. That's great. That's great. Make sure y'all apply in real time. Do this thing right. 
approved. And if we need to do a class so you guys can feel comfortable applying for it, let's do the damn class. And let's get everybody this money. I'll do a free freaking class and I'll make sure everybody sign them damn applications and do what you gotta do. <clears throat> okay? And keep in mind, because I know how you guys talk, I showed you the questions that came prior to this. I showed you the questions that came prior to this, which means they wanted them to fine tune it because it was so much loose translation. But just get into the know for what's going on. Get into the know, and then when I do the class, whatever's updated, <clears throat> we'll have the most updated information. But right now, this is where it's at, and I don't see no one or nothing online talking about it. So walk with me. <clears throat> Approve an application based solely on credit score or uh, applicant and shall not require an applicant to submit a tax return or a tax return transcript for such approval. Do you hear that? The stuff that scares you guys. Yo, what if my credit is shot? Yo, but I ain't file taxes. You know, because normally those are the people that's left out. Okay, and we're gonna skip down here. And when we skip down there, we're gonna see pursuant to 15 USC 636B in parentheses two in response to COVID-19 may request that an administrator provide an advance that is subject to paragraph three and the amount requested by such applicant to such applicant within three days after administration receives an application from such an applicant. This is all funny talk for, we gonna send you that money as soon as possible, okay? Now, you know, when we was young, we told our children don't talk like that, don't define a word using the same word, and here they are, for such applicant, 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 to applicant, applicant, you start reading that, you wanna be hypnotized, you start falling asleep and you get tired. Just know that they're saying we wanna get you your bread inside of the three days that we see this paperwork, we process it, we wanna get the money right back to you. That's the translation. That's how we're gonna do that. <clears throat> we're gonna go to the next one. And you gotta get used to reading these things so it don't spin you around like that. Once you get used to going through this type of stuff over and over and over, it becomes natural. What about being put in debt from a loan? Listen, in this particular case, that's why we talked earlier about it being a loan quasi-grant, minus all the struggles of a grant. The reason why we're doing this is because we're letting you know that they have a loan forgiveness program. So, so long as you use the money, on your business, so long as you use the money to pay your employees, hopefully your wife is your employee, whatever, however you set it up for your children, so long as you show that you have paid the light and the gas for your home. I remember I did plenty of lectures last year. Do you live where you work or do you work where you live? Okay, is your house your office or is it your home? See, all of that is coming into fruition today. All of that. So it's a loan forgiveness that the government is allotting to you. So long as you can show you gave back to yourself for the purposes of advancing your agenda business-wise. There got to be many ways for you to do that. Let's not be weird and ridiculous. If you, if you invest in the stock market full-time and that's what you do for a living as an entrepreneur and you hire some people to help make sure that they keep a tab on what the stocks are doing, the ebbs and flows, <laughs> then you pay them a little bit and you pay yourself so you can make sure you got the time to invest in more of these stocks. Listen, it's not rocket science, family. We're going to get this together. <laughs> okay? You don't have to go nuts on the translation of you being a small business. Get your damn money, man. All right, so we're going to go over here. Repaying obligations that cannot be met due to revenue losses. Repayment, an application, right here, an applicant shall not be required to repay any amounts of an advance provided under this subsection even if subsequently denied a loan under section 7B. So if you haven't been denied of a loan before, it doesn't matter, of the Small Business Act. We're gonna go down. So all the rules is being thrown out the window, family. Doesn't matter if you had horrible credit. Doesn't matter if you've been denied before. It doesn't matter if you have employees or not. It doesn't matter if you filed your taxes prior. Understand, family, it's open. The door is open. Pandora's box is open. Yes, it's a loan forgiveness. Okay? Authorization of appropriations. Right here. We'll post this stuff on the site for you to read. 
there is authorized to be appropriated to the administration $10 billion to carry out this subsection. The authority to carry out grants under the subsection shall terminate in December 31st, 2020. So you keep going on. You'll have this at your disposal to read it in full, but this is some of the act and some of the things that we felt was some of the more integral things or most exponential things that you should keep your eyes on so you can realize this is not the same world we lived in before. We have an amazing lesson that's gonna be coming up. And in that lesson plan, you know that Guess who's, guess who's going broke? Guess who's in debt? The damn people that say you're in debt find themselves in debt. That's right, the debt collectors, the debt collectors are in debt too. The debt collectors are shutting down. Their business is shutting down. That means you can raise certain hell people. But what this means is the dry snitches are gone. And if the dry snitches are gone, there's no one to snitch on you. So you say, hey, uh, I don't really know about that bill. Prove it. So they go to the dry snitches. Excuse me, you do us a favor. Can you dry snitch like you just did? Oh, I'm sorry. No more getting business. The dry snitches are going out of business too. The people who are always talking on you making your lives miserable. You got to learn how to take advantage of what's going on. Pray that you live through this virus, because if you do, you should have amassed certain wealth. If you come out this virus broke, not because you were sick, but because, I mean, if you, you have to stop. Samurai be sick to be broke after this. If you walk in with us, you ain't got no business being broke. If you walk with the mother teachers, I get it. You've been broke prior, you're going to be broke during, you're going to be broke after. I get it. But if you walk with us, you ain't got no business being broke because every time there's an opportunity, we're going to tell you about it. We're going to tell you where to go. We're going to tell you what to click, what link to click, what to read on. Here's some information you need to see that you ain't going to see there. You need to go over here to read that information. You're always going to have reference points, title codes, sections, statutes, stipulations, provisions, laws, references, you name it. We're not going to lead you astray. We want you to succeed. Because if we grow a successful colony of people, it would be nothing, nothing to do what? Open up a, a, a private equity group, establish a private equity group. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can do any of a number of things. Start our own hedge fund. Okay? And you have a peace of mind, yeah, I could put some, a significant sum of money into that without worry. Because at the end of the day, these people pointed me in the direction of the money. So thus far, we've loaned ourselves a great deal of credibility by making sure we educate our brothers and sisters out here. Make sure you register at imbrotherpolite.app. Okay? Polite being spelled P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Pride, optimism, love, integrity, gallant, honesty, and trust. I actually have to get ready to do another recording for credit that's going to be sent to our students, to our mentees, to our people that's from the master course. They got to get a, a real Jew. We're going to be talking about credit utilization ratio and the impact of it and how we got to stop playing around with it. There's a lot of nuances to it. It's almost like magic. But once you tear down the walls of illusion, once you remove the veil, once you get rid of that cloak, oh man, you in the game, because that's exactly what it is. So my brother's about to add a lot of value to the conversation, and we're going to get into that. I want to just make sure I can get this off. Make sure you share the video with your friends, your family, your well wishes, your advocacy, your lover, significant other, your children, whoever is out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So long as they're of age, I don't see why they can't get the money. Go get that money, man. I know that for the love of all money is the root of evil. I hear you, and that gets mistranslated a lot. You know, they say, for he so loved the world, he gave up his only begotten son. But then they say, if you love the world, if you love the world, then you don't have the love of the Father in you. Which one is it? 
He loved the world so much he gave up his only son. Then you can tell me I can't love the world. Eye for eye, one minute, turn the other cheek the next minute. Am I getting smacked in my face and walking away, or am I smacking the motherfucker back? I don't know. I ain't got time for all that chaos. These religious convictions, keep to yourself. Your political reservations, keep it to yourself. What I want to do, with, with neutral ground, I want to make sure you can feed your family and give them what is past due. Don't just be satisfied working check to check. Okay? That's my interest. That's my investment. You keep your religion, and I know you have great intentions. And the person that disagrees with you, they too also have great intentions. But the person next to you that disagrees with you, we all wind up in the same boat here. Struggling because of a lack of knowledge. And that's what we need to transcend right now. And that's what your scriptures say, right? It says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right? Let's all agree with that one. That one we can all agree on. The lack of knowledge is destroying us as a people. Let's agree with that. Let's no longer agree to disagree. I hate that. We will not agree to disagree. We will agree to agree. There has to be something we agree on. I don't want to deal with the ignorance. Oh, let's just agree to disagree. That means that we're going to pick up this argument at a later, later date in time. Why can't we separate, but in our separation, we come to terms with what we do agree on? What we do agree on is, we can use that $10,000 damn dollars. We can use the $1,200 if it comes. Right now, it's a bunch of talk. Don't get caught up and miss anything. Because you out of the loop, you out of tune, or you're intimidated, or you don't know who to go to or who to ask. Don't be ashamed. If you got to send an email, if you got to register right now, and then when you register, you say, yo, fam, I don't have a clue what the hell's going on. I don't really do stuff like this. You know, I be in the underworld. This is what my brothers be telling me. I'm in the underworld, homie. If you can help me out, bro, I give you PC. I'm not even looking for PC. I ain't looking for none of that. I just want you to get the hell out of this situation because it can get real bad for us overnight on, at any given day or time. And you don't want the difference to be your lack of understanding because you didn't have the humility to say, brother, I just need a little help. Can you help me go through this? I do it. Anybody that knows me, they get annoyed with me sometimes. They say, yo, flight, why are you acting like you know completely nothing? Brother, if I come to you to learn one thing, I'm coming to you as if I know no things. That's how I am. If I need you for one thing that I don't know, then consider me totally oblivious to everything so I can catch anything in between that I may have missed out on. That's what I'm about. So don't feel no way because I do the same thing. Every day, I, I'm at other people's disposal like, hey, I'm doing my knowledge, right? But when it comes my way and I don't know something, I know completely nothing. I ain't got the time to tell you why you're teaching me something, what part of what you teach me I know. Oh yeah, because I'm familiar with this. People do this to me all the time. I say, look, we need to save time. I need to expedite this process. And then while I'm telling them what they don't know, they need to stop me in between me telling them what they don't know, the parts that they do understand. What good does that do? You didn't call me so you can share information with me about what you know amongst the things you don't know? That's insanity. Don't no one got time for that. <clears throat> so I'm like, hit, hit, wait, wait. If I connect with you, please don't spend your time telling me how much of this you already do understand to lead me up to the point where you do. Nah, just let me flow. Let me roll with you, or let me, yeah, I might just need to tell you, yo, let me put you on the phone with one of my people. That's the question that you need to talk to this professional right here, and he'll get the job done for you. I don't got a problem doing that, because I can't do every damn thing. So let me help you help yourself, so we can get the ball rolling. Our people need assistance when it comes to these things. A lot of us is old school, <clears throat> my pops, my wife laughs all the time. I'm like, yo, did you see the picture of your granddaughter? Yo, you know how I feel about that text stuff, man. If you're going to text, just give me a call. Why well, I got to read the messages? I'm not enough to talk to you. My father leaves his cell phone in a room like it's a damn landline. He goes to work. His cell phone is not attached to him because he treats it like it's attached to the damn wall. That's my father. I just don't get it. He stresses me out. And maybe one day I can show him how to go access his text so he can see these pictures. Do the pictures delete after X amount of time? I just went through this crazy conversation for the third time with Pops. I called my Pops, yo, why you don't pick up? Well, you know I leave the phone on the room on the nightstand by the lab, bro. And sometimes I gotta cook, sometimes I gotta clean. I'm like, Pops, it's a cell phone. 
He's not doing it because of radiation, people. He's just doing it out of freaking ignorance and rebellion. And what I'm saying is, a lot of you have hit that old age in your young age when it comes to reading, when it comes to filling out applications. I went through that even when I was up. Early on in me teaching, I went through the whole, y'all, even now, when certain things pertain to computers, I don't know my usernames, I don't know my passwords, just the thought of me even starting to deal with that stuff, I start getting a little spooky. And I gotta ask my wives and my children to help me out. And they look at me. And they say, you gotta stop this. And I say, you know what? I've been getting on people's cases about being like that when it comes to filling out applications. I started learning how to use my new phone. I'm so proud of me right now. I, in fact, the course that went out today went out faster than it normally does because I've actually followed the advice of my family and started to learn how to use my own damn phone. My phone shoots on 8K. At least I did 1080 or 1070. How, what's the number? 1080p. I did that today. It's a damn disgrace because I can shoot on 8K. I'm going to figure that part out. But I'm working. I'm working. At least I'm out to 700s. I'm in 10. Now the next thing is 4K. Then I'm working away to 8K. My phone do it all. But what I'm saying is you, we all need someone to encourage us to take it to the next level. And if you're too ashamed or you're too embarrassed to go there, you're going to miss out on... on your abundance. You're going to miss out on your abundance. So I have to do this because I know how your phones are programmed. And when this tunes off, when this turns off, when you tune out of this, there's going to be a world star hip hop video that pops up that's owned by MTV to distract our brothers and sisters of the community. When this turns off, there's going to be a video that comes up. Hey, Want to know some gossip about Brother Polite's life? Oh, look at this. This lady cheated on her husband. Then you're going to see somebody else twerking, 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 twerking. Now, I'm not telling you don't stop for a few moments to look at the twerking. I'm not going to tell you that. Okay, that'd be foolish. Look at the damn thing. But what I'm saying is, don't get so consumed by it that that, that fills up your whole time and consumes your thinking. So how to set it all? Please take this information serious, review the video, share it with your friends and your family, let them know, start the conversation. You might be around somebody that can help you with the situation. You might tell someone that already filed it and is, and is pretty fluid and, and expansive when it comes to understanding these types of things. But in the worst case scenario, which is your best case scenario as well, if you need a little help, just try to, now nah, I won't say try. If you need a little help figuring this thing out, see how easy it is to use sentences without the word try. Just remove it and you still can do the sentence. Try is too weak and words are our GPS of reality. If you need some help, just reach out. And I'll have myself, and I know that's unlikely for most people because there's so much people that it's going to view this by the time this is over, or an administrator will connect with you. And, and, and work with you to the best of their ability. This is just something we're doing on a strip for the community. We're not charging you a damn directly. Because I know it's not enough just to say go to SBA.gov and type of stuff. And this, and this corona thing in itself is a new scenario. And some of you young brothers and sisters that's out there, really young, this is your first dilemma. This is your first official dilemma. Every generation goes through it. This is your first dilemma. All right? We had the Crown Heights riots in, on Eastern Parkway, <clears throat> Crown Heights, with blacks against Jews. Some of y'all had the Rodney King riot in LA, and everybody in between kind of missed certain things. You had the riot in Ferguson. We had the blizzard of 96 in New York. You know, that was pretty intense. We had the World Trade Center falling. All right, I was going, I was cutting school and about to head to Century 21 right across the street. All right? So, but that's a New York experience. But this time, it's global. And it's national. It's nationwide right here. So a lot of you are really, some, some of the younger brothers and sisters here, this is your first time. And, and what happens is, when your parents are not available and there's a baby that they gave birth to, sometimes they force the older sibling into adulthood prematurely. And you miss out on your childhood. So in this particular instance, you might be thrusted into more obligations and responsibility because of the circumstances that are before us. 
You have to grow up in real time. You have to catch up with the time that you're in. And this is a message for the young brothers and sisters there. Don't sell yourself short. Don't count yourself out. I'm a 10th grade dropout. The more you learn, the less you know. It doesn't work the other way. Okay? I talk to my pops. He tells me crazy things. He says, well, son, you know, yesterday was longer than today. It sound deep, right? But how the hell could yesterday, pardon me, he says, today is longer than yesterday. And that shit sounded deep. And he told me this for years. Well, son, you know, today is longer than yesterday. And one day I just asked my pop, you know, I shook my head to that quite a few times, but how the hell could today be longer than yesterday? Yesterday in totality is 24 hours. What hour are we in? And whatever day that we're talking about that can make today longer than yesterday. But this is what happens when you just don't take the time out to think and see what's in front of you. I'm saying the obvious is here. Money is right here. But one thing they can bank on is that there's a large percentage of the people that say they need the money that will not do what they need to get to the money. There's a large percentage of the people that say they need the money, I need the money, ain't nobody care about us, we don't got the money. And then you go read in the fine print, and the fine print damn near stipulates anybody can get the money. And you will X yourself out. So please reach out to us when you can. Okay, you know the email, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. What you can do, actually, don't, don't send. If it's about this, go to admin, A-D-M-I-N. We will ignore you at brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. I can almost guarantee you that. If you're not talking about buying a course or paying for the credit restoration microwave or paying for the entrepreneur course, which is really the industrial course, if you're not talking about the golden crisis, if you're not talking about none of that, don't go to Brother Polite 45. You're not talking about paying for a consultation, conscious advisory. Don't go over there because those people over there is programmed to see, okay, you want to buy this? Okay, that's how they programmed over there. Don't go to that. You won't get the results you're looking for. Don't be slick, or I'm gonna just be the only one that went over there. Don't do it, because it's already overloaded over there. Go to admin, A D M I N, at I am brother polite dot app. That's it. Go to admin, at I am brother P O L I G H T dot app. And if you need help with any of these things, we'll formulate a list of the people that say, Yeah, I need some help with this. I need some understanding. Don't consume too much time. Be respectful to other people's time. We can't talk to everyone for one hour. If we talk to 24 people, that'd be the whole day. And that would leave us no time to for food or bathing. This was very essential, right? We catch a whole new virus if we just don't be bathing because we're answering questions for every day for hours on end. <clears throat> so please go to admin at IamBrotherPolite.app. That's the email. Go over there with your questions so people can work with you for absolutely free and, and, and get you on the right path. I thank you guys and you females, you sisters. I found out females is a negative word lately. I thank the brothers and sisters for listening and staying in tune. Be sure to share this video with your friends, your family, your advocacy, your well wishes. Elufu, perpetual success.